In this video, we're gonna talk about how to write articulations in your jazz band arrangements. In this video, I'm gonna show you all the most common articulation markings that we use on uh, horn arrangements for big band. Uh, but before I get to that, if you like videos like this and you're trying to learn how to write for big band or just get stronger with your arrangements in general, hit subscribe. I have new videos like this coming out all the time and uh, definitely check out my Patreon. Uh, the, as I've been getting busier, it's been harder to find time for me to do things like this, but I feel obligated to release a video every week because I promised it to my Patreon. So uh, if you like videos like this, definitely check out Patreon and pledge a few dollars a month. It, it helps me a great deal. I wanna get a quick thing out of the way. A misnomer, perhaps. Uh, I've heard a lot of people call these symbols accents, and they're not. One specific type of articulation is the accent. So if you call them all accents, it's a little bit confusing. So for this video and for the rest of your life as a musician, call these things articulation. There are five types of written articulation that you really need to be a master of if you're going to write for horns in your jazz band writing. So those ones are staccato, tenuto, accent, marcato, and slur. Five. Let's begin with staccato. Staccato looks like a little dot on top of the note. <laughs> You've seen it before. That means separated or short. Tenuto, which is also called a legato marking, it looks like a little bar on top of the note, and that means to play that note full value. Accent, which looks like a little sideways V, <laughs> means to emphasize that note. It does not imply anything about duration, specifically how long or short the note is. Marcato. Marcato is actually the first articulation that really differs between jazz band music writing and classical music. In jazz band, in, in our world, marcato, it means short, like a staccato, and emphasized, like an accent. <laughs> the combination, accent plus staccato, is the same as marcato. Of course, it looks better to have one symbol <laughs> on your note, so use marcato to mean short and loud. Like me. <laughs> short and loud, like Elliot Deutsch. The slur. Slur marking is very similar to tenuto in that it means full value, but a slur, unlike all of the other articulation markings that we talked about, uh, is placed over an entire phrase or several notes, and it means that all of them are connected and full value. It does not, in jazz music, it doesn't necessarily mean that none of the notes have a tongue uh, at the beginning of them, a tongue sound, but it does mean that all the notes underneath the slur should be played full value. Well, we're talking about articulation, it would be remiss of me not to talk about quarter notes in swing music. So, I don't mean 1920 swing, I mean anything with swing eighth notes. Uh, the quarter note is ambiguous by itself, meaning it, by it, on it, on its own, it doesn't imply anything about duration. So, a quarter note <laughs> on a piece of swing sheet music could either be short or long. And as an arranger, it's kind of up to you which one it should be. So if you have a quarter note in your jazz chart, specifically your swing chart, it should have an articulation on it that implies duration. So <laughs> all the articulations we've talked about imply duration, except for the accent. An accent by itself doesn't imply anything about duration. So don't use it on a quarter note, <laughs> generally. Uh, notes that are longer than a quarter note are always implied to be long in jazz band music, and ones that are marked short aren't correct. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Don't write a dotted quarter with a marcato on it. It's kind of meaningless. Uh, and then notes that are shorter than a quarter note, uh, specifically an eighth note or a sixteenth note, are going to be played short if they're by themselves. While we're at it, a short note that, it, that happens on the beat on a jazz band chart should be a quarter note. So. If we have a hit on beat three, it should be written as a quarter note on beat three with a quarter rest after it. And the quarter note should be marked short, either with a marcato or a staccato marking. 
A short note that's on an upbeat should be written as an eighth note. So if we have a hit on the end of two, for instance, it should be written as quarter rest, eighth rest, eighth note. Uh, it can either be an eighth note by itself, which would still imply short, or you can put an accent on it. Putting a staccato marking on it doesn't mean anything, so don't do it. When you're writing music for your jazz band to play, the goal is to make your music as concise and legible as possible. Ideally, you want to get your music performance ready with the fewest number of read-throughs possible. Uh, when you're preparing an entire concert, you have several pieces of music, and if you have to spend lots of time explaining how you want things to be phrased, then that's time taken away from other pieces of music that you could be rehearsing. Take your articulation seriously, take a little bit of extra time when you're done writing a piece to make sure that all of your articulations are correct and say what you mean, and you will have a really successful reading of anything you write for jazz band. So with that, that as a short little nibble, I've got a really exciting lesson that I'm working on for next time. So please hit subscribe. <laughs> We're recording parts. It takes a while to get those kind of things together, but we've got an exciting one coming through the pipeline. It's a little more involved than this. Uh, so definitely hit subscribe and don't miss it. And until next time, goodbye.